I never saw such beautiful landscaping. You own a landscaping business. You're incredible. You're listening to the Outdoor Project Podcast. Hear real conversations with leaders in the hardscape and landscape industry. Listen on Spotify or watch behind the scenes and more on YouTube. This podcast is sponsored by Alliance. Quality products formulated for all of your hardscaping needs. Glues, sands, edging, and more from Alliance. My name is Dan Preston with Preston Hardscape Design and HardscapeMentor.com. Um, I can't even believe I'm following guys like Sean and Richard and you know right, that I, platform, everybody right? else. When I seen who was else was in this booth today, I, I felt yeah. grateful for sure. You Definitely. know what? And me introducing you and, and bringing you on the Outdoor Project podcast, it wasn't. I don't even know how many followers you have. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. But it's me following you yeah. and following you as an artist. No, thank you so much. And I'm like. We got to get this guy on. We got to get this guy <laughs> yeah. on the show. <laughs> no, I, I thank you so much for noticing that, right? It's like I, yeah. I'd like to, th- I, I do call myself a hardscape artist, right? I, I feel like I finally accepted that title. Yeah. Because I was just like, I'm a little bit different. I'm a little bit more creative, right? And, yeah. and it's like I, I do a lot of the work myself because I take every project like an art piece. Yeah. Right. So and, you're owner operator sacrifice no craftsmanship on any of your job sites i'm really yeah i have a hard time letting (laughs) anything go right so i I worked for design firms as a as a residential designer yeah you know that was kind of part of my history but it's like i would draw something and and design it and go in the living room and sell it and, and it'd be a creative design that solved all the problems but then i would go to hand that off to a crew for me it's hard to get some of that next level stuff on the same page with a crew member, right? right? So, yeah. And like I said, a lot of it's art. Like I, I take it like hardscape art. So, uh, like you've seen the mountainscape, we talked about that. I can't hand that off. So, no. I, basically, I always say I get my foot in the door with the design. Yep. Right. That's the start of it all. Like what I can solve their problem with creativity. Yep. And then I put the bid together like I'm going to build the whole thing myself. <laughs> I know that sounds wild. I've put together multiple six-figure projects with me working on them alone 60 70 percent of the time right and then i just utilize subcontractors who own really nice pieces of equipment right yeah now how do you approach that that mountain project really caught my eye sure. so we go back to being an artist yeah we got to get ben over here real quick with a cell phone to uh to video our sneakers we got oh, something sure. really we really big something. in common yeah that's pretty cool man so again what I've noticed about you, not only your creativity, if everybody follows you and watches your work, dude, it's amazing. Oh, I appreciate that. But I also seen your sneakers. <laughs> I also seen your sneakers in every video. Oh, I'm it's starting amazing. to get out there more. It's who I am, right? So it's like I'm going to wear my J's when I'm on camera, right? <laughs> let, I, let us know, when you jumped out of that helicopter, what were you wearing? I was wearing them custom J's. So we shot that, uh, that helicopter scene of me stepping out. Yeah. That's what my videographer would call B-roll. Okay. Right? We, we needed to get that shot. So I stepped out of that helicopter six, seven times, stepping down, perfect, trying to get that shot. <laughs> and why I wanted to do that was one of the subcontractors, like I said, I'm a one-man band, yep. right? That's out there now. But what I do is I try to make build the biggest network that I can, yep. straight up. Like, yep. I can take on anything and I feel in the country now. I'm, I'm starting to build a network from California to New York, right? So if I get a lead... I got some dudes I can already call who, right. who hopefully have some room in their schedule to just come help me for a little bit, right? So uh, a kid down in Knoxville had reached out to me to come work on that project, and basically I used him as a subcontractor. He got wind that I collected Jordans, right? And, he, yeah. and, and so he had graduated college with a kid who went into business making these custom J's. Yeah. So I told Ben I collect Jordans. It's kind of a bad habit, whatever. <laughs> I, I get done using Ben Dotson on the mount on the. Uh, the helipad project. Yeah, yeah. And I get a pair of these custom J's in the mail. No way. And I was just blown away, dude. Wow. Like, like that, that to me, it was even like a mark in my career, right? Yeah. Like, are you serious? Now I have a Jordan with my logo on it. And wow. I take a lot of pride in my logo, you know, we, yeah, we yeah, can get yeah. into that. But it's like, I'm a graphic artist. I, you know, I guess that's what I went to college for. Yep. That's what I wanted to be. Um, like I was talking to you about earlier, that's how I approach everything is with graphic art. So yep. when I got those shoes from Ben, it was graphic art. It was hardscaping. It was a gift from a contractor who's now like a main guy in my network. Yeah. Those had to be a part of the episode, right? Yeah. Oh, it had so to be. So I just shot another episode, uh, the final walkthrough last week. I wore those shoes again. Yeah. Everyone's asking where those custom J's are. They're, <laughs> they're, they are only going to come out for the hometown hardscape episodes. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Now, I can tell. I mean... 
not even knowing you, meeting you for the first time, I can tell you're a graphic artist. <laughs> Thank you. Let's right. talk a little bit about that mountain project. Sure. Again, me as an artist too, mm. I used to design clothing. Yeah. You know, I used to put logos on t-shirts. I started out as a t-shirt yes. artist. You sure. know what I mean? Yeah. When I seen that design. There's so that much mountain, in common, Joey. <laughs> oh my God, it's crazy. <laughs> so as soon as I seen that mountain design, you're taking that design and you are actually making it into a patio. Yeah, yeah. So instead of a t-shirt design, simple yeah, sure. stuff that I was yeah. doing. And not only that, dude, how, many, how much material you used. I mean, everything that came together on that job was just perfect. Yeah. Can I'm, you lead us through that project? Sure, you got a minute here? Right? <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, I'm just, like I told you earlier, like I'm just pushing all the boundaries now. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm done. Like I, I, I'm done doing cookie, I see it. cookie cutter stuff and like, you know, there's a market out there for that, and the guys who kill the square one color patios, great. Yep. Keep killing them, right? You you have your niche. Yep. My niche is creative, custom, detailed, and it's like as soon as the world found out, I feel, and like people started to eat it up. Yeah. And you know, I got the job in Tennessee through social media. As soon as I started to get my my work out there, that's when I had the response of like, wow, I am doing something different, right? Yep. So the the mountainscape project. Is actually, it's going to be sponsored by Unilock. I'm going to have a video on YouTube about that. Yeah. It's been kind of in the works for about two years. Um, I was going to do a compass rose. So we're all familiar with those. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've done a compass rose in the past. When I first started my business, I did a compass rose out of, I guess I'll call it a subpar material. Yeah. And I wanted to do one out of Unilock. Like, that's who sponsors me. That That's whose team I'm on. Yep. I wanted to do a compass rose out of their product. product. Right? So I had this plat I had this canvas, right? So that's what I call my open graded stone. As soon as my canvas is ready, yeah. let's go. You're right. So I hire, I hire subcontractors to prep my canvas. Yep. That's what I call it. Just get this to where I can put my <laughs> chips down. I'll take over from here. Right. It's basically how I operate, yeah. right? I can direct excavation. I can direct uh, filling it back up and compacting it. Yep. And then I take over. Right. right? Then I start to put that together. <clears throat> and so I was going to do a compass rose. The thing is, we've seen them. Too much. You know what it is. Too much. You've seen them. Yeah, You've we've se we've done them because we have a fabrication department. Or their kits too. Their kits or their kits. Yeah, yep. right. Exactly. Yeah. So everyone yeah. knows the compass rose. So yeah, no. I don't know. I guess I'm a big fan of the mountains. I don't know. I grew up in or I was born in the mountains of Arizona. There actually are mountains in northern Arizona, <laughs> like Flagstaff area. So I just appreciate the mountains and the vibe of the mountains. Yep. I live in Wisconsin. You know, there's not a lot of mountains around. So I want to do a graphic kind of illustration of a mountainscape. Yeah. So all I did was go on Google, yep. right? And I just searched up, uh, that's, that's my daughter's term, by the way, searched up. <laughs> I just uh, searched up uh, mountainscape logo, yeah. to be honest with you. Yeah. Mountainscape logo right. image search on Google. And they gave me all this inspiration, like the caps of the mountain. Right. Because I wanted straight lines, right, Joy? This is a graphic art piece, yep. right? Almost like a logo on the ground. I just wanted straight, clean, whatever. And then I'm joking with my apprentice right now, who we can get into later, but I said, Angel, this has to look like a mountainscape. Like, right. you, you can't walk up and be like, what's this? Right? So it's like, <laughs> I hope I'm pulling that off and everyone knows it's a mountainscape. You definitely pulled it off. And full disclosure, that's my boneyard. Yeah. Well, oh, really? Right. Wow. What, right, whatever, right? So I'm getting haters saying, oh, looks like you cleaned out your boneyard. Yeah, I did. No, right? I, I did. And I put 11 different pavers I love and flagstone. It. And I tried to make it as clean as I could. Dude, right? just the black you use, what, Town Hall, Copthorne, yeah, right. Il Campo. <laughs> right, series. <laughs> yeah. So it gives me inspiration. Like, yeah. I was just, basically, I was just throwing stuff together. It looked awesome. It's so wild. Like, yeah. I would go, like, you ask my apprentice, I'd be like, what's next? And I go, <laughs> go over to my, my, my you know, my scrap yard. And like, oh, and then, like, oh, you know. Everyone's like, what happened on those side mountains? You know, it looks like you ran out of, uh, what is it, uh, uh, series town hall and matoni yeah. all in the black and then i used copthorn on the side and i was like well i, I ran out i had to switch to another black right? <laughs> so when i switched to the side mountains i just did copthorn herringbone yep totally different texture Love it. totally different pattern yep. right that's what it's all about yeah. as many tones i always use those words textures tones textures patterns and shapes yep right break them up split them up yep but then making them all go together right <laughs> that's what i feel my specialty is yeah. so the mountainscape is a really cool project and then I was like, I inlay flagstone in a lot of my work. Right, like right. Now it's just become like, if someone lets me inlay a little flagstone area, I'm doing it. It's super gratifying work for me. Yep. It's a lot of hard work, but I love being on my saw piecing together flagstone. You yep. know, I use the two finger joint method, I call it, and that's my consistency. And I'm piecing all that flagstone together, right? It's an art thing. Yep. So I'm doing the mountainscape. I have 10 different kinds of pavers or 11 different kinds of pavers in there. I'm like, 
I'm missing one of my trademarks in that natural <laughs> stone. I go over to the landscape supply yard. I don't know what the last band of sun is going to be yet, right? right. I, to me, I'm putting together a, a, an art piece, right? Yeah. And it's like, I'll figure out what my next medium is to use on this thing, right? Yep. So I went to the local supply yard, and, they, and I have a really nice supply yard in my local market. Multiple kinds of flagstone, probably a dozen different kinds of flagstone that they truck in from all over the country for landscape uh, contractors in the area. Yep. And there's like this gold one with all these crazy like sunset type of colors. And I was like, that's it. That's it. Me and my apprentice hand picked a bunch off the pallets, took them back and started cutting them in. I'm actually going to add add in lights to the sun. Oh, so nice. I'm not I'm not done with that yet. Oh, right? okay, so okay. what happened was I had a break in a really large project. And so I snuck that mountainscape in back on the large project when i get a little break it's a big new construction project yeah. with a lot of moving parts yep. a lot of other contractors involved it's been going on for a year and a half wow so whenever i get a break from there and another guy has to move in i take off and work on that mountainscape i hope to wrap it up within the next week or so when i get back yep. and then full youtube video on the mountainscape coming up joey oh so, all day yeah. long yeah now do you think you'll use that moving forward that piece yeah well, it's I just, mean, or something similar well it's just going to open people's eyes yes. up to what i do right like yeah i don't know if you've seen the helipad that we put together yeah that's that, a, yeah that's what i wanted to talk about when yeah. you started talking about an inlay yeah you did that when you were doing the job in tennessee yeah when you got to the top of the stairs and you put that inlay right in the middle of the uh the landing there yes yeah yes. oh the inlay the stone yeah. yes the inlay once the again stone. another ad lib yeah right i'm just working myself to that landing yeah i'm working with amazing clients who are open to all artistic you know, accents and yeah. whatever, whatever I can provide that client. Every time I did anything that took their job to the next level, they ate it up. Yeah. So that's game on for me. Right. Like, <laughs> so we go from the mountain. Let's talk a little bit about that Tennessee job and congratulations on going live on Monday with that helipad. It was pretty oh, amazing. Man. Now, were you driving a helicopter? Were you flying the helicopter? Ah, do I get into that? <laughs> Oh, uh, full, full disclosure, I guess. <laughs> full disclosure. Uh, my videographer is a magician, yeah. right? I didn't want to ruin my day and go look in, the, good. in the helicopter and, and uh, come back with any kind of sickness or anything I else. I so. dude. But we did some epic filming that day, man. Yeah. I rented that helicopter and I flew it in. Wow. It, it was all for hype this thing up, yeah. right? It's yeah. like, and I joke around. It's like, find another paver helicopter pad on the internet, right? Yeah. The one doesn't exist. No. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like, I'm going to hold on to that, right? Yeah. And what the TriStars is, is a representation of the Tennessee state flag, yeah, I've right? I've seen that, the three so stars. Right. So it's just like their state flag. They have a logo on their flag, right, that I was kind of play off of. But that came from my first Compass Rose, right? So the Compass Rose that I did for five years ago when I first started my business was 12 foot diameter, yep. right? That helipad's 40 foot diameter. 40 foot. But it came from that, the, the, right. the client seeing the compass rose. It's like, I got an idea for you. You know how to cut stuff in. You know, I got this TriStar logo and I have an area in my yard. So what that doubles as is a turnaround. So you drive down this uh, long driveway, you, tur oh, okay. you turn around by the lake, head back up, yep. right? So it's where I stored my materials for the other two phases. Okay. The helipad was always one of the projects I was gonna get done in this on this uh, three phase thing, yep. but it was last phase because that was my staging area for all my boulders, all my base, everything yep. else, right? So staging area turned into the TriStar helipad, Wow! right? Yeah, and to fly that helicopter in, I mean, I work with an amazing videographer. Yeah. I feel like he's helped me get my following and uh, <laughs> <laughs> got some guys trying to, trying to throw me off here. No. <laughs> That's another thing we can talk about. I cannot get enough of the Instagram community. Like, it, oh, it's amazing. It, it, it is why I freaking hardscape, man. It's, yeah. I hardscape for Instagram and the guys that are on there. I really love that community. And that's what I'm saying that because these guys are all giving me a hard time out here outside the booth. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so the TriStar was the mic drop, right? Yeah. I had a walkway on that job, a 300 foot long walkway. That's yes, where you've seen the going inlay. All the elevations. Yeah, so that's first phase. Second phase was the poolscape. I mean, that Tennessee job is a whole nother podcast put together, right? Yeah. How that came through, how that evolved is, it's an amazing epic story, man. It was an Instagram direct message. Yeah. You know, and I say it's like, <laughs> it's like a piece, every, everything you do is like a piece of artwork because it's similar. You know what I mean? As as you're putting your signature yeah. on everything. Yeah. When you look at that Tennessee job, <laughs> it, again, going to the mountain project and using so many different, yeah. you know, you know, same with the Tennessee job. I have multiple, multiple materials, textures, tones, you know, and I get a lot of com compliments and comments on that job. Like, 
wow, that's a lot of materials in there, but it looks great. Dude, it you know? looks so good. Making them all work together and then having a scaled out like sections of, if you're gonna bring in flagstone, bring it in somewhere else. Right? Yeah. If you're gonna bring in a uh, rich cliff paver, bring it in somewhere else. Yeah. Obviously, rep you know that with design and artwork, it's yeah. repetition of design, right? Yep. Yep. So like the two, mo the two mountains on the side of the mountainscape, yes. the top two white caps are the same. Right. Because I made a template. So I made one white cap, flipped it over, other side. Yep. Exactly the same symmetrical. snow peaks. Yep. Symmetrical, yeah. right? And then that middle one's way off. Right. Right. So that's like the art part. Like yep. wah, wah. <laughs> there, there's another mountain mountain yeah. top, right? So yeah. I love the Rich Cliff decision. In the poolscape. Yes. Yes, man. Yeah, I, I love, love that, it. I love that product. It's like a yeah. blue stone, right? Oh yeah, yeah. So yeah. What, I guess the tricky one to me on that poolscape project was the travertine. Yeah. Oh. It's my first time ever laying travertine, right? And I border everything with quartz stone and Brussels. So you get different heights. Well, we got a little bit of a thickness there between yeah. a, a seven eighths travertine <laughs> and, a, and a two and three quarter Brussels. Yeah, and right? such a hard material and oh my, such a soft yes. material. And then I'm a madman, and I and I sanded the travertine with tan, and I. Sanded the Brussels with black. <laughs> no one wants making your life harder. No one wanted to be around me that day. <laughs> <laughs> but I what the I had black everywhere else. Yeah. In my borders, I, I used yeah. a, a black uh, polymeric sand in there, and then I put the travertine. The, the client's idea for the travertine, super trendy in, in Tennessee around pool decks, right? Yeah. I was like, sure, we can throw it in there. I'm still gonna you know put some banding lines through and 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 add a bunch of pavers to the travertine, but. That was a that was a challenge for me. I mean, the whole job was a challenge, but you know, you come out of every one looking forward to the next one, right? But I look at that as those are artistic decisions that oh, you man. made from day. I want to be challenged yeah, too. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. right. I don't care about how long it's going to take. Not this a bit. This is me. This is what we're going to do. Yeah, efficiency. You know what I mean? Like I <laughs> right. Efficiency. When, as soon as, throw it out as, the soon as guys start talking about efficiency, <laughs> uh, we're not on the same page anymore, right? Like. I, I charge for my vision. That's what I was about to say. Yeah, man. I charge right. for my vision. And I, obviously, I built a built a platform, I think, in a little bit of a portfolio to be able to do that. Yeah. That's why it's so hard for me to guys come up like, year one, you're not building that mountainscape. And you're not selling that mountainscape. Yeah. Right? So that's what I'm trying to get it across to right. these kids. It's like, it took me a minute to get there, fellas. <laughs> <laughs> right. Now, as an artist, dude. I would love to just dig deep. You know, we could talk about hardscapes all day long, right? Yeah, right, exactly. But let's talk about you as an artist. How did that begin? Oh, man. <laughs> I feel like I've been drawing things my whole life. Yeah. I really have. Like, if you know, I, I played with Legos my whole life. Full, full disclosure, I was probably playing with Legos as a sophomore in high school. Uh, <laughs> I was drawing shoes, houses, and semi-trucks. Wow, I don't know if that makes sense, but my dad was <laughs> my dad was a truck driver, yeah, right, and I, and I could and I was like into architecture probably a little bit as a kid, yeah, architecture logos, shoes, yeah, like I am now, yeah, the, right? hence the addiction. So I drew with pencil, paper, like when I was five, six years old, right. Then I so then when I graduated high school, all through uh, senior year in high school, I was putting together logos for you know the the drama department at the high school i went to like yeah. if, the, if the high school was putting together another brochure like i was an independent study who designed the logo yeah right so i was a logo guy yeah in my city already at 18 years old right, right. so then i went to college um for graphic design yeah right because that was the next thing they <laughs> i'll be honest, here's the dead truth man <laughs> i didn't want to draw like deer and people and no. i couldn't draw that right, right. that's not i'm like I know I'm an artist, like, but I, there's no way I can draw a 3D human. Right. Like, that's not on my that's not realm on of art. <laughs> so maybe that's my excuse for, like, uh, having a little bit too much fun downtown, uh, you know, when I went to, when I went to college. Right. But either way, that was, like, a turnoff to me. It's yeah. like, I'm not a fine artist. Right. right? So I was kind of searching for what I'm going to do. And I, I was mowing lawns at the time. I had one gig when I was 19 of mowing lawns for a school district. And then I got a job as a landscape laborer. This is seriously, like... The, the roots of my career was, right. was the first business I got a job with, Joey. Yeah. This place in La Crosse, Wisconsin, I worked there for eight years. I was trained hardscape skills by guys who had been doing it for like 15 already. I'm 20 years old. Yep. I didn't know what I was going to do. All my buddies graduated college. I was like, hey, where are you guys going, man? We're, <laughs> I thought we were hanging out, right? <laughs> I was that guy back yep. then, right? Yep. I was that guy. And then I just, I, I, I started to work in landscaping and work with my hands and 
I got to appreciate the, I guess, the art of landscaping at, at a really young age. At 21 years old, I'll never forget my supervisor who I accredit every detail I look on right now to this guy. His name is Arlie. Everything is like, would Arlie accept this? Would Arlie accept this? <laughs> at 43, and he changed me at 21. He trained okay. me at 21, right? That's so that's a big part of where I'm at is my official training uh, by guys who had 15 years of experience yep. when I was year one. Yeah. I feel you can go into a business, like you get a job at a hardscape company, if you're not getting trained by the right dudes, yep. it doesn't matter your experience, no. right? So they, they led me on to maybe I am a landscaper and his line was, Dan, you, I feel like you either have an eye for it or you don't. And he's like, you do, bro. Yeah. He's like, you have an eye for it. You know, yeah. you, you can set a boulder level, right? You can cut, you can cut a miter straight. Yeah. Right? He's like, you have an eye for it. And I just took that and ran with it. Wow. So that company made me a hardscape foreman um year two by year two i was putting in walkways you know super intimidated but it, i would get a big plan you know that like when you became a foreman at this company that's when they could hand you a plan and you could take off and run with it right yeah i was stoked i thought that was the next level of my career yeah. i get a plan i go run with it so and that, they believe in you exactly man the trust whoever you're working with and they trust you right yeah. so i was doing my own thing as a hardscape foreman for eight years I moved kind of across the state. Uh, that's another story, but I have family in another part of the state. So I moved back to be closer to family. Now I left that company I was working for for eight years, yeah. right? So now I got into, I don't know where we were going with this, but I'm just trying to go through my career yeah, here, just, right? So yep, I started exactly. out as an artist, dropped out of art school, yep. landscape labor, hardscape foreman. Found the niche as an artist. Yes, exactly. The details, everything. Right, So I was, but I was only putting in stuff other people drew, right? Right, for, right. for 17 years, I put in other people's work, you know? And lots of times I would, Towards the end, uh, some of the companies I was, I was working for, I, I didn't like to, like I'm working under a designer and I'm putting a job together. I'm like, I don't know uh, about this. Like right. this could have been a little better, but not my position at the company. Right. Right. Not my position at the company. Yeah. When I was a designer, that's when I talked about handing my things off and not having to be put together right. So right. basically just went, basically went on like that. Wherever I worked, Joey, I was always the pickiest guy. Yeah. So I went, I went through probably a three year phase working for five different companies. I'll be honest with you, because I'd, I'd have expectations, they would, and it, it just wasn't a match, right? And I yeah. feel a lot of it was because I'm just like, <laughs> I'm super picky, yeah. super like, you know, to a fault almost, like I can't hand things off, right? I'm just all over the details, like right. li literally to a fault, yeah. I say it, right? Because yeah. it's like, a, it has to be perfect, right? And my, and But one line that same Arlie guy told me was, it doesn't have to be perfect, it has to look perfect. Right. And I took that. Like that's that's my gold right there. <laughs> Everyone's like, well, not perfect. I'm like, no, not perfect. Yeah, but it looks perfect. Yeah, right? yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. So then that just evolved, and then I got a job as a landscape manager. So then I'm looking over three other crews of foremen and guys, but I don't know, Still man. Still, you're not designing. Still, I'm not designing, right? Yeah. But then a company said, hey, we like what you're doing as a project manager. When you go out in the field, you can add lib with these guys, you know, and you can perfect. You can add onto the patio. We That's can like the start. Right. We can see that if you yeah. can add lib on the site. Maybe you can design, yeah. right? So then they're like, will you come in and help us this winter with design work? I'm going from a project supervisor to now a designer. Wait a second. I'm drawing again. Yeah. I just told you I've been drawing my whole life. Right. But when I was a foreman, project manager, I was never drawing again, right? So all of a sudden I'm back to drawing, wow. right? At 35 years old after hardscaping for 17 years or whatever. Yep. I'm back to drawing. I also found out that that meant sales. <laughs> <laughs> right, <laughs> getting in front of the yeah, customer. Yeah, exactly. Was, I'll be a designer. Oh, that's a salesman too. Yeah. yeah. So then I got into the sales. Yeah. Well, now I know the other side. Yeah. I know the rest of the story. Right. As a foreman, project manager, I didn't get into those numbers a lot. Yeah. Right. I didn't know that side of the business as much because I was a field guy forever. Yeah. You know, I feel. And then as soon as I got those numbers, but that might not be, you know, the sales end of it might not be your gift, right? No. The, the gift was the creative end exactly. of it. No. So it made it easy to sell yeah, exactly. because of your, you exactly. know what I mean? Because exactly. you're a creative now ability. The design sell it. Yes. The design sell yeah. it. Like, you know, I, I love, I've had multiple, you know, I've had multiple uh, consultations or design presentations where I set that down, set that 3D model down or pulled up on my computer and they're yep. like, yeah, we'll take that. Yeah. I didn't even say anything. Is that easy? <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's when I realized, oh, this is going to be all right. My, my designs are going to do the sale right. selling for me, right? But then I'd hand it off to a foreman, and then I felt like the cheesy salesman. Right. I told this client they were going to get this awesome, detailed project. Look what I drew. It's going to be just like this. Yeah. And you, you got to babysit these guys for it to be just like that. <laughs> and I was just done with that, right? So yep. then, then I got a big lead uh, through another contractor friend of mine. 
He's like, I, I have a client who I'm doing some audio video for. They're looking to put in a pool. I thought you could at least draw the design for them, Dan. He knew I was a designer for another company. Right, right? So right. He's like, maybe I'll bring you in as a designer. And I just got to thinking, I was like, this is it. This has to be the, this has to be the chance. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So my first job out the, out the gate was $120,000 poolscape. It turned into a $220,000 poolscape with change orders. Yep. I was on my knees for six months, Joey, working by myself. Wow. Because when I started my business and I drew this design. That's all you had. I was like, I'm just going to draw the design and sub it out. Right. Right? Whatever. I drew the design, got my foot in the door. I'll sub this out. I'm still pressing hardscape design. Yeah. But right away, those subs had never worked with two different thicknesses of pavers. Yeah. Automatically. So you found it first easier just did, doing it yourself. First thing I did was like, I, I only designed with two different thicknesses of pavers, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing with Unilock. Yeah, They, they I know. gave you that, right? Right, but I, I guess I don't complain about no, that. And guys no. that do, it's like just, I know I have a whole collection of wood jigs, right? But, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you're screening. Jig with it the, up, jig it down, yeah, doesn't matter. Yeah. I have a pile of wood jigs, yeah. you know, for sure. That's how you make it work. And then a level, but I'm on my knees making sure it's perfect. Yeah, right. Yeah. So, yeah. Definitely, man. And that's the detail of it all. The details. You know, I feel like that's where that's what got me to wherever I am today. And then being an on-site designer builder. Yeah. You know, that, that project in Tennessee, the three phases, the walkway, the pool skip, the helipad, massive, right? Yeah. Massive project. Lots of projects like that would have been designed. And then how many people would there have been before the foreman? Right. Right. Does, some, some, some companies have a, a salesman, then a designer, then a project manager, then a foreman, then a technician, yeah. whatever, right? Unless you're like spot on, something's <laughs> gonna get lost in translation. Especially with a lot of moving part like parts like that job has, yeah, right? Yeah. So that client ate up the fact that I was the designer. I was also there from seven to five every single day. Right. Right. So now, yeah. but how do you I mean how do you end up with a job in Tennessee? Oh man. Through social media oh, this or is, through this the is, this is probably one of the craziest stories of my career. Yeah. I'm just gonna be uh, really uh, transparent about this process on how I got this Tennessee job, right? Yeah. So I started to get myself out there a little bit on Instagram and YouTube. Yep. I feel the YouTube videos is what really separated me. Just letting everybody know my processes. Like you're really vulnerable when you're showing excavation to the final walkthrough. Yep. Like I'm walking through my jobs at the end, pointing out all the details. So obviously those are going to be put together right if I'm going to put that out to the world, right? right? Yeah. So I started doing Instagram. I've been doing Instagram and YouTube for a little while when this lead came in. And Lots of times I feel like my Instagram followers and maybe these other guys can talk too, but you think you're talking to other contractors, yeah. right? I feel like we have, maybe you have two audiences, but when you're scrolling through Instagram and you follow the hardscapers that we follow, yeah. lots of them are talking to other contractors, yeah, yeah. right? Like their post is for me or, yep. or you, right? right? Little did I know there's a client in Knoxville, Tennessee, who's just eating this all up. He's following me on Instagram. He's YouTube, we're watching my YouTube videos. Yeah. He did that for like a year and a half before he reached out to me. So then wow. when I heard the full story on how this guy found me, yeah. how he followed me forever, and then how he finally reached out to me, dude, <laughs> that was like, I was about to cry. Right? It I'm, works. I, I get an emotional because of my artist side, I feel. Yeah. And so he reached out to me on an Instagram direct message and said, uh, Mr. Preston, I appreciate your style. I love how you incorporate different tones, textures, and patterns into yep. your designs. I have, a lar I have a design drawn for my property in Knoxville, but it doesn't do it for me. Right. He's like, I had a designer come out here. They drew a design for this outdoor space, and it just doesn't do it for me. I'm wondering if you could take a look at it, maybe put your spin on it. Yep. Right. Sure. You know, I'll, like I said, can you send it over and let me know what it looks like first? <laughs> it's like, I hope I can put my spin on it, right? And he sent it over to me, and I'm glad I don't know who the landscape architect was because I would for sure call them out. I mean, I could not believe that this guy paid the money that he did for this design. I mean, it was like a $10,000 design. It looked, like a it looked like a bunch of clouds. It was just not anything anybody could build off of. It wasn't giving him a visual at all of his space. So I took that into my SketchUp program. And what you can do with SketchUp is you can load in like a PDF and then you can draw right over the top of it. Yeah. Right? So yeah. I drew a design. <laughs> I made all her. I made all those architects lines look silly with new curve curves and, and, and transitions. Yeah. Like that's a big thing that I try and do is when you transition from this space to this space, whether it be planting space, patio space, pool space, it's a curve and a line that yep. gets you over there. Right. Right. It's all about access and flow. And how smooth that flow And how was. it goes from there to there, right? There yep. to there. So started putting together this I'm still in that story of the Tennessee job, but yep. started <laughs> started to put together a design for, for this guy. Yep. And he's like, Oh, this is great. He's like, You already blew their design away. Nice work. I better Venmo you some money. So we started a relationship and uh, about to finalize the design. Excuse me, I'll take a drink here. Yep. 
about to finalize the design and I, and t I gave him a call on the phone and I said, Jim, this is about as far as I can take your design without getting my eyes on the site. Right. Because there's a massive slope on that site. Yeah, that's what I, I mean, said. That transition from the lake to the house is, is what? 20 feet. 20 feet. 20 wow. feet. So I have 15 40 foot. 40 steps. I have 15 foot of uh, block of boulder retaining walls on that job. Yep. Seven foot, seven, seven and a half foot. It's just crazy. Yeah. So he told me he wanted to put a poolscape in the back on that slope. And I was like, well, that's fine. But I have to build a mountain on the other side. Right. right? We need a flat spot up here. So putting together the design for him, Jim, this is most as I can do without getting my eyes on the site. Because what he was going to do is he was going to hire local guys to put together my design. Yeah. That was his initial approach, right? Yeah. And then this guy goes, well, let's get your eyes on the, let's get your eyes on the project then. Yeah. And he's like, I'll fly you down here. I'll put you up in a hotel. Yeah. And he's like, you charge me a day's wage. I'll get you out on my site and you continue putting the design together. Right. Are you kidding me, Joey? Now you're thinking. <laughs> I'm, I told you my career. <laughs> right. I told you, I told you my career. Yeah. I started out as a landscape laborer, project supervisor, designer, never happy, always the picky guy. Yeah. Went on my own. I get a call, you know, from a guy in Knoxville saying, oh, I'll fly you in. All right, let's go. Right. I'm going to fly in. Wow. Yeah. So now you had to make a decision too, right? You had a few contractors on that job. You couldn't yet. handle it yourself. I'm, I'm no? only flying there to, to continue the oh, design. Oh, just the consultant. At this point, oh, okay. I'm only still a consultant. Wow. At this point, I'm only still a consultant. Yeah. He flies me in, and I get out to his property. And so the original drawing was for the poolscape area, yeah. right? But he had this nasty concrete walkway going up the right side of his thing, the first phase of the project. Yeah. And I'm just like, Jim, no one knows you're putting the poolscape in yet, right? But you got this walkway that needs some intention. Yeah. Right? He's like, you have an amazing home here. It's like, I know this walkway has always been a problem. And I thought about doing that someday. And I'm just like, let's do that first, right? Like, let me, you know, I already had that in my design anyways. Yeah. Because yeah. the other lady did. I basically like drew over everything she did with different lines right so he's like let's do that walkway let's work on that walkway first and put together a design for everything else drop me back off at the airport me and this guy hit it off wow. day one Perfect. the second he picked me up from the airport the whole time at his house dinner with him and his wife he feels comfortable with you oh, now man, we, he doesn't want to let but, just that design but go. why he reached out to me was because no one in knoxville tennessee was putting himself out on youtube isn't that crazy he couldn't find anybody who was letting being that vulnerable yeah showing their process from the beginning to the end and then yeah. obviously you know i i'd hope to think i do good work too yeah so yeah. the full picture of that was like this is the guy i need yeah so when he dropped me back off at the airport he's like dan the more i think about this he's like i need you to build it too wow I swear all the way a consultant until the drop off at the airport. Wow. It's like, Dan, I really think I need you to build this too. Well, it's February, <laughs> right? I live in Wisconsin. Yes. I'm under a foot of snow, mm -hmm. right? I go home. What's up, Edward? Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Mainstream. Mainstream. Right? This guy's positivity is ridiculous. I love it. I wish I had half of it, right? Quality company, confidence. Yes, choice. I love it. But uh, <laughs> yeah, so it's February in Wisconsin. I got yep. a foot of snow on the ground. I go back to Wisconsin. I had lined up a subcontractor, right? Yeah. I had just met this kid who bought a piece of equipment. He's trying to break into landscaping. Hey, man, let's go meet for breakfast. You want to come down to Tennessee and help me build a job? Sweet. I didn't know what I was doing, yeah. right? I'm just rolling with it, right? Yeah. So we get an Airbnb. I take these two 30-year-old, uh, like 28, 29-year-olds down there with me to t Tennessee. We bust out the walkway. What this client did was allow me to come back to Wisconsin, right? So I get shut down in Wisconsin for five months snow on the ground yeah. right so every landscaper in wisconsin plows snow for five months except for you shut down their projects yeah right yeah, yeah same I, thing in the northeast same yes, thing in rochester yeah. so i started going to tennessee yeah right? and, that, and it was just amazing and you could work all year round in tennessee yeah exactly yeah. so february i went home got those guys two weeks later i went back right it's still snow on the ground yeah so how fast of a turnaround is that wow my clients wait a year or two years for me to work for them that guy only had to wait two weeks oh, right because it's winter God. time yeah. <laughs> dude that's perfect yeah now the only thing in tennessee um you know with the terrain the, oh you know, man the is, clay yes is there different oh man things that, you had to think about oh, differently i guess uh if I start talking about that, <laughs> so this this slope that we're working on, man, yeah. I, in Wisconsin I work in pure sand. Right, oh, it, it really is. is. So m the county I live in is one of the largest producers of cranberries in the country. Yep. Cranberries grow in sand, oh, right? Wow. So every new construction, I put in my shovel in the ground. I got about six inches of black dirt. Hey, it drains well. And then beach, right <laughs> after that, I get down to Tennessee, and it's the nastiest clay I've water. ever seen in my life. Wow. It's like bubble gum sticking to your shoes, whatever. So that walkway, yeah, 
Uh, that just about did it for me, man, because I'm down there, didn't know what I, you know, with this crew, we're living at Airbnb. And what you're getting into. And that March, it rained every other day. Wow. And when it rained, I could not work. Yeah. My skidster wouldn't make it up the hill. The mini started sliding. We couldn't do anything. Yeah. Go sit in our Airbnb. Wow. Right. And it was just like, man, I'm supposed to be down here working. We'd get like two, three days of good working because it was just raining, raining, raining. Yep. The clients are like, oh, it's never this rainy in March. I'm like, oh, perfect. Right? <laughs> so we eventually we started to stage our stuff up the hill. Yeah. You know, for the poolscape, we straight up made another road. Like we just started making roads out of gravel. Like, fine, we're not going to make it up this clay. Let's just make a road out of gravel. Yep. The road on the poolscape, the access road actually stayed and they black topped it now and it's a golf cart path. Wow. So look how that evolved. <laughs> yeah, right? so, yeah. No, terrain and dealing with that, that was a whole different thing. I took a lot for granted there. <laughs> and then again, what about what about product selection? So obviously you found a Unilock dealer down there, I right? Did. There's a story about that though too. I used Brussels sandstone yep. is one of my trademarks on the for outside. The, for the outside. For the outside, yeah. right? Well, Unilock has different manufacturing plants throughout the country. Yeah. And the story they told me was that Brussels is made with a sand. Uh, it's made with sand, right? Okay. So it's like whatever color the sand is or something in the area, that's kind of like plays a part in the actual the color, color of the sandstone. Yeah. So the client's like, I want this border. They circle my border on Instagram, right? They're like, this border, send yeah. me a picture. I like it because it's a tumble. gives yeah, you kind of a natural exactly. look. Yeah. And I tell, uh, that's become my trademark. Yeah. So Unilock, Ohio represents Tennessee. They send that client some samples of their Brussels, yep. and it's orange. Oh, it's more yeah. orange. It's not yeah. white, right? Just because of the different. It's one of their products that doesn't have the face mix and stuff. Yeah. So it turns out whatever color the, the, the con- part of the country it's coming from, right? Yeah, so we buy out of Ohio, too. Yeah. So our, our Your sand- sandstone's orange. Oh, it's orange, Exactly. Yep. So uh, Unilock makes me look like a rock star, right? I get on the phone with my guys I know in Unilock Midwest out of Chicago, and we get pallets of... Uh, Chicago sandstone sent down to Knoxville, right? And it's and, beige and it's white, white, right? yeah, I mean, white it's, beige. It's tan, yeah. but it's almost white, yes, right? So yeah. that white, black, that's what makes Perfect. all my curves, yeah, right? That's what emphasizes everything I do. What did you use in the middle? Was that Beacon Hill? Beacon Hill. Beacon Hill. So and you used two rows of it, yep, and so then, then you end yeah. it with no cuts. Yes, man. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. I didn't know if I was going to lay that in a pattern the whole way. And cut the sides off. I loved your choice. And then I was like, if I especially did the, the winding. If I did this running bond, yes. laid this real slow, I can wind this up there with no cuts. However you want. So cuts in the bid, no cuts in the build, already ahead, right? <laughs> you cut at the beginning, cut at the yeah, end. Yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> On a, or every staircase. Yeah, but every yeah, staircase. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So we got that Unilock truck down from my market. To, oh wow. To that market, right? Now all the natural stone. Did you use all Tennessee? That's all native, right? Nice. That's all because Love they have it. beautiful beautiful natural yes. stone it's called crab orchard and yeah the, so we grab natural stone out of tennessee too for that reason oh, love it yeah because yeah, you can't you can't get it in new york and yeah. it changes it changes the colors of yes. the project i can't believe those steps uh from the steps to the boulders yes. to the flagstone it's all the same material right yep. and it's that crab orchard the tans yeah uh, the oranges a little bit of an orange yes it, yeah it was, it was awesome product to work with yeah. so i was thankful for that and i kept calling that out native tennessee stone crab yep. orchard right yes. with unilock yeah with travertine right so now yeah. did you make all those selections yourself or you put it together you put those color swatches together and they approved it yeah i would say the, the main uh the main thing they wanted was the travertine included, yeah. right? Because that's trending and they wanted the coolness. Uh, they walk up the Beacon Hill walkway and they notice that that held a little temperature yep. when the sun hit it. Yeah. So that original area of the poolscape where I have the travertine, the travertine's a lot was, cooler. Be- was Beacon Hill. Oh, okay. Because that was what I was using yeah. everywhere, right? So I was going to do yeah. a, a three-piece pattern, Beacon Hill, Courtstone, Brussels. Hey, we got a pool deck. And yep. then they threw the... Travertine, the travertine in there thing in there but but, but it works really we well pulled it off and then i hooked up with uh chris morales is a contractor out of knoxville yeah i noticed who, that follow him yeah who yeah. did a bunch of travertine right so yeah. chris was another contractor who reached out to me on instagram i had two contractors when i was working in tennessee the power of instagram and why yeah. i love it so much yeah the client came through instagram and the contractors who i worked with after that so the guys from wisconsin worked with me on the on the walkway yep. and then about 75 percent of the poolscape and then they left, right? So then I needed to grab some new dudes. And I was fortunate in that time to meet Ben Dotson and Chris Morales, yep. their local Knoxville contractors. Yeah. They were con- they were messaging me on Instagram just to come out and look at it. They're yeah. like, hey, Dan, we see you're in our market. Can we just come look at this job? <laughs> I said, yeah, why don't you bring some tools too, man? <laughs> <laughs> And that's what they did. And the rest is history, man. Those wow. guys are my boys for life because they came in. 
Chris and his crew worked with me for two weeks on the poolscape. Yep. Uh, ben Dotson worked with me for about three days, a Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Ben helped me sand the whole job. Otherwise, yep. I would have sanded it by myself. Now, right? didn't didn't Richard from RC Outdoor come down to look yes. at the project, And then too? Richard, another thing, it's like Richard happened to be in the area. He, yes. he knew who Chris was. He was Mar- doing the pool thing or something. Yep, he was down there training for pools, yep. and, and he, uh, he came in and stopped out. Dude, the power of social media. I hope to have a, a for my new platform, I hope we get into that, but so I started a new platform called HardscapeMentor.com. Yes, yes, I follow and I, that. And I want to have a, a meetup at this poolscape, and I've already talked to the clients about it, right? Yeah. So I, in the near future here, I'm going to hold an event at that project and just bring guys through and show them all the details I put into that job. So. Wow. Yeah, so anyways, meeting those contractors yeah. was Instagram as well. Yeah. The helipad, two local contractors, and myself. Yeah. Right? So that's the network I'm trying to build. Wow. Someone calls me in New York. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go to New York. But I already got a connection, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. All yeah. day long. You know, yeah. we did a we did a podcast with Fox Terra in yeah. uh, California. Yeah, I've seen that, man. Lucas Lagoons down yes. in Florida, right? That's what I mean. And what am I doing here? This but, dude, but they're doing the same thing. They're doing jobs down in, you know. Uh, because they're building a network. Yeah. Uh, Fox Terra is doing a job in Arizona. It's going to be the biggest uh, lazy river in a residential pool. And he's working with local guys, probably? He's working with local guys, yeah. yeah. And Lucas Lagoon is doing a a job in California. So, you know, I see it, how it's working, but I think it all evolves because of social media. Yeah, no, exactly. You right. know what we, I mean? we can make these connections a lot easier yes, now. Yeah. Yes. A simple DM and you got some guys on your team. Right. Yeah. Right. And then you're looking at Morales' stuff and saying, wow, he does good work. Yes. He's exactly. going to be solid on Let's my team. Go, yeah. I could still overlook it yep. for all the details and stuff. Exactly. And you're good. 100%. And we had so much fun in that helipad project. That's why in that YouTube video, I had to put him in there. Those guys came in and we just, I mean, when I can laugh and joke and, yes. and we're all putting pride into the pride into what we're doing, I'm having the time of my life, right? For yeah. sure. And I think the marketing end of it moving forward, is that going to be your staple? I mean, are you really? It's, it's hard for it not to be. I right. feel like how I've gotten in, even, even in this booth, Joey, is marketing, branding, yep. trying to do that. So I'm trying to start this whole new brand called Hardscape Mentor. Yep. It's basically a spin off of Preston Hardscape Design. Yep. It's basically just trying to give back to young, up and coming hardscapers who want to break into hardscaping or they're hardscaping right now and they want to add that creative touch right right so i want to i'm not going to be i'm getting older every year <laughs> and, I, and I, I don't want to be the last guy building uh creative outdoor living spaces right yeah. i want that to keep going i want kids to push the envelope even more and just get as creative as they can but still solve people's problems and still build the projects correctly right so yeah. hardscape mentor is a, a membership platform where we have full tutorials online we add to it monthly and it's basically just 23 years of experience, blood, sweat, and tears. At this point in my career, I feel it's the next step is for me to give back to the industry yeah. as much as I can. Yeah. yeah, and I think Sean from Premier said that too. You know, even from the start, he was like, he just wants to educate guys. You know what I mean? So yeah. we can't they got be the only one. Ahead. Sean and I can't be the only ones. Right, <laughs> right. Yeah. right. It's just so funny, dude. We come from a very similar background. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I found you on Instagram. <laughs> wanted you to bring we're two artists. Yeah, no, that's great. We in both were the same wear the industry. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, no, it's great. It's yeah. really cool. It's so I feel so blessed to be here. This event is just amazing, right? Yeah. This is what I tell everyone. It's like when you come here, you feel uh, proud to be a part of it now, right? Yeah. Everyone in here is in this for the same reason, yeah. right? So it's like you, you feel like you're really a part of something, and it solidifies what you're doing with your life, right? Yeah, yeah. and even if you don't come here and you don't find any new tools or any yeah. new products you come here for. You're still going to meet some other dudes, right? right? And you're going to network up. Yeah. I, I mean, I went in a couple booths, but I'm just here to talk to people. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking to talk to people. I mean, I'm looking to add to my network, right? right I, exactly. I, I call them all Team Buffalo, and, and uh, Sensings and Outdoor Project Pot is definitely part of Team Buffalo now. Yeah, so. now what is, expand on that, because I do see you do hashtag Team Buffalo. So I'm, I'm hashtag Sick Brick, and I'm hashtag Team, Team Buffalo, Buffalo, right? And what that is is, like, if you search on Instagram or, yeah. or any platform, you can t- click on the hashtag, right? Yeah. So I was taught a long time ago when I started branding and social media, Hey, if you can come up with a hashtag that no one else has, yep. you're going to be the only guy when they click on it, right? Yeah. So that was Sick Brick for a while. That's crazy. It really was, right? And so I got some gear for you guys. I just run with the Sick Brick thing now. Yeah. It's like, it's a little bit quirky, a little bit whatever, but I was working with some young kids who were just like, that's sick, that's yeah. sick, and it just came out, Sick <laughs> Brick. So everything is hashtag Sick Brick. And then I started hashtagging Team, team Buffalo, Buffalo, and that's just that's my network, yeah. right? That's the big. I'm trying to grow the biggest Team Buffalo I can, yeah. and basically all that means is that I know you and we're on the same team, right? right? And anybody we're, hashtags it's a part of it. Yes, exactly, yeah. right. And then in the Hardscape Mentor thing, the spinoff is I'm calling everyone in that group the herd. 
Oh, nice. Right? Yeah. So we go from Team Buffalo to the herd, right? <laughs> and I'm trying to build this herd group, man. I got a bunch of young, hungry guys in there, yeah. and, and I go live on my lunchtime, and I go monthly in my lives, and I'm like, what's up, herd? We're, we're, we're out here. We're one uh, one team in one direction, and that's to level up. Like, yep. that's my line, right? And that's all I'm trying to do is just nice. the evolution of my career, right? Yep. Landscape labor, foreman, yep. project manager, designer, business owner, right? Now, the next thing, educator. man, mentor, consultant. Yep. Yep. 100%. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah, man. So my hashtag, the street smartest. The street smartest. The street smartest. I love that. It's only mine, dude. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you have to, I don't care what, and everyone has one. Yeah, you yeah. Know, you just have to think about what you do in your brand and come yeah. up with it. I'm even telling guys, I'm like, you should use this as a hashtag, right? Yeah. Yeah, because it, no one uses it and it's unique to something about you. I was just surprised that nobody had it. Yeah. You know, when I came up yeah. with it in my head, I was always the street yeah. smartest. Street smartest. I like the, <laughs> I like to play an artist and smart. Yeah. Yeah, for it's sure. Awesome. Yeah. Dan. Thank you for joining the oh, Outdoor man. Project podcast, man. It's, it's I feel amazing. blessed to be here. I feel yeah. blessed to be here. 100%. Thank you, dude. Thank I you. love your story. Thank you guys so much. I'm, I'm excited to uh, see where this goes, right? Yeah. This is the first podcast I've ever done. <laughs> dude, I feel you're like, a natural. Uh, I don't know about that. I, <laughs> I feel like this is the first time I've been able to get my uh, platform where I've been able to get my story out there, yeah. right? And if anyone wants to follow up on this and like reach out to me and be like, hey, can you elaborate on that a little more? Or where did you really get those J's from? Like, just, <laughs> just, just hit me up right i'm gonna have to hit you up about those yeah i feel like i'm an open book i do get a lot of messages as do a bunch of these guys but i try and get back to y'all you know i'm I'm trying to build team buffalo right so yeah we appreciate (laughs) it we're gonna hit you up yeah thank you guys so much for sure yeah thank you